your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. In this episode, we anchor in the caldera of the famous Krakatoa volcano. But first, we make a pit stop at this gem we named Opal Reef. On Navionics, it didn't show an opening, but on Sats, we could clearly see an entrance. And what a beautiful place to stop for the night before we headed to Jakarta. And how do the Indonesians use their VHF radios? Oh. You play uh, Bollywood music on it, that's how you use them. And they do that on Channel 16 as well. Look at this old clunker. Unbelievable. <laughs> Happy dude, trawling. Amazing, there's so many of them out here. <laughs> Noisy bloody things. We arrived into Jakarta at night, dodging many ships, fishing boats and fishing platforms, and we anchored in the harbour just outside of the very grand Batavia Marina. In 1950, the population of Jakarta was 1.4 million. Today, it's over 11.4 million, and it is ranked the most polluted city in the world. We only stopped in Jakarta for some quick repairs and to get some fresh provisions, but in the short time that we were there, we couldn't help but notice the obscene wealth juxtaposed by extreme poverty. You will see many mansions and luxury cars in one street and then slums on the very next. recently earned it the title of the most polluted city in the world and for the past few days air quality continues to be rated as unhealthy. Indonesian President Yoko Widodo has also developed a cough purportedly because of the pollution. Um, and I just wanted to show you the water it's really gross. Um, you can smell like sewage. do a really quick little update. We've officially left Java and uh, are currently heading towards Anak Krakatoa which um, in Bahasa is translated to young Krakatoa or baby or junior Krakatoa. We're gonna go and sit at uh, Rakata which is the big island you can see right there. So anyway we're gonna go and uh, anchor in there for the night try and hide out from the wind and swell maybe give it a day or two before we start punching north up the uh, Sumatran coast towards the Mentawais. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd give you a quick update. This morning we left um, this little island, I don't even know what it was called, just outside of Java there uh, at about four o'clock this morning. We had a crack yesterday, but the current between these stra the straits here, the Java Strait, is just insane. We had 4.6 knots this morning running with us. Um, and yesterday we were trying to go against it and we, were just, we just stopped dead. So we pulled in a little anchorage for the night and hit out there. and and left this morning. We had, we had a crack in sail this morning. We were, we were hooking along all right. Um, then that big that big old rainstorm came through and we were so close. So Sarah and I just decided bugger it. We'll, we'll pack the sails up and, and just motor on in. Make some hot water and, and a few other things. So anyway, we should be there within the next hour. I can, I can see Krakatoa actually smoking right now. It's pretty intense. I don't want to be here for very long. We're only going to maybe spend a couple of days here and then, and then piss off and stay away from here. The, the ring of fire, which encompasses most of Indonesia, has actually been really, really active lately. So I'm a little bit nervous about it and we're going to just uh, give it a day or so, wait for the wind conditions to change in our favour and then we're going to head off. 
So anyway, we'll uh, we'll try and do our best to shoot some footage. Uh, I'll get the drone up and see how we go. But um, yeah, that's where we're at. That's where we're going, and that's what we're doing. See ya. Nothing like a bit of skirting with an active volcano in the background. <laughs> Selfie, mister. Selfie, mister. <laughs> mister. Did you see what we just did? What did you just do, Brendan? I was flying the drone over Krakatoa. Sam and I were. As Sam had do. his drone up. I had my drone up. And did a couple of laps. Got the fucking the best footage you can imagine. Thinking I'm Steven Spielberg, and the pilot got lost. As I as I started to run low on battery, it was beeping 20%. I came back to where I thought we were, which is where we launched the drone, but I didn't realise we'd drifted half a mile. And I saw a boat on the ocean and I just I just took off for it, fanged it. And by the time I got to the boat, I had 3% of battery left and I realised it was an Indonesian fishing boat. Um, and the dude was like, hey, happy and waving, and I just fucking crashed it straight into the front of their boat. Because it, it was going to run out and I didn't have time to make it to where we were. So we just raced over to these guys here and they're like, hello, <laughs> it's like your drone pointed. So that, uh, that ended. That ended pretty well. Is there life on Mars? As Bowie says. I'm just gonna make my way across the Mars landscape and try and um, film the, uh, what do you call it, seismic measuring equipment? Something like that, whatever. If there's a volcanologist out there, tell me I'm wrong. But uh, this is just like walking on the Mars landscape. Makes me wonder how well those solar panels work with all that shit on them. You can tell that the sulfur lands here like just look how much it's eating that fence away. Unreal. Everything has just been eaten. All the metal. I wonder if any of this shit actually works anymore. It doesn't. Couldn't possibly be functioning. Although they measured an earthquake here only two days ago. 3.6 I think. Look at that, that is dead set a scene out of like Mars exploration. Alright, I'm gonna get out of here, this place is creepy. That's where we're staying, boats are over there. How bloody cool is this though, eh? How many people can say they've walked on Krakatoa? And before anyone kicks up a stink about it, it's not illegal. We checked, you can actually do a guided tour up there. Krakatoa became infamous for producing an explosive eruption and powerful tsunami in 1883 that proved to be one of the deadliest and most destructive volcanic events in modern history. The blast obliterated the island of Krakatoa, but 50 years later, a new island, Anak Krakatoa, meaning child of Krakatoa in Indonesian, emerged from the sea. And this is what Anak Krakato looked like before the 2018 eruption, which caused a deadly tsunami after the southwestern flank collapsed. Up until this eruption, the volcano had steadily been growing at a rate of up to 9 metres per year. Where it once stood at 338 metres, it now stands at just 157. Oh, look at that. That's a cool view. So for anyone wondering, we're on Anak Krakatoa right now, which is the baby. That there is Rakata Island, or Rakata, how you want to pronounce it. So pre-1883, the big blast, from here to there was all just one big mountain. Just, yeah, land. 
So when Krakatoa actually erupted in 1883, it basically blew this massive crater out and split these in two. Um, yeah, loudest noise ever recorded and the sound wave actually traveled around Earth three times. Just phenomenal. Yeah, you know, it's around the corner, it's a bit less, uh, a bit less red with the iron, more black. Yeah. How amazing is it that anything's actually growing? Like yeah. those coconuts taken. Yeah, well there's also crabs that are burrowing into the sand as well. Yeah. So yeah, it just shows that after a little while, um, stuff will start coming back. Unreal, eh? I don't know how it grows here though. Like this, this ground just feels like acid, right? <laughs> doesn't it? What an unreal setting though, eh? Hey, what are your mates doing today? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a volcanic rock. Wouldn't want to be hitting heaven, they're actually a little more dense than I thought they were going to be. Not like pumice, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's kind it's of pumice, almost halfway to pumice. Than it's, but um, it's really dense. But, but we've got a, a pumice rock and it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot lighter than that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's the difference when they come out under the ocean compared yeah, to yeah, straight out of the volcano. One of the most incredible landscapes we've ever seen. Spoiled by us. Look at that. That is all rubbish as far as you can see. And it's only probably been here for five years because this erupted in 2018. So yeah. it's pretty disgusting to be honest. Have you ever wondered? We humans are the worst possible thing to ever happen to this bloody planet. Look at that, that is just disgraceful. So when this volcano um, erupts, which it does regularly, apparently it erupts something like several times a day, um, it spews this out, these things here. This thing here probably weighs about half a kilo and it just spews out thousands of them. So you can imagine getting hit in the head by something like this coming out of the volcano. Are you getting clocked by one of them? Yeah, I know. Uh, fucking hot one as well. Oh. So it's just saying this thing erupts like several times a day, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah. that's what the volcanologist said? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it said uh, two, three, four times a day. Uh, stuff comes spewing out, so let's not be here. No, I reckon it's time to go. <laughs> Got one of them in the head. Join us next week as we head towards Sumatra, but not without a bit of drama unfolding first. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.